Hello. Hello. Welcome to, welcome to episode 44 of the Nick Girls. 144? Oh. Yeah. I'm going back in time. It's <laughs> Let's like, not. I don't want to relive my past. <laughs> it's like uh, Back to the Future. Back uh, to the Nick Girls. Back to the Nick Girls. Historic years when dinosaurs <laughs> ruled the earth. <laughs> My little. Uh, I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Les. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. And I like that I don't look like the brain dead one this week. That's going to be your honor today, I think. Yes. So. When you don't feel well, wear lots of eye makeup. <laughs> it like distracts. Shiny when you're strapped makeup. for time, don't even bother. <laughs> So, yeah, this is, you know, we love you and we love doing the show, but some days I have the time to do makeup and look all pretty and do hair and some days I don't. So. You look pretty every day. Oh, uh, whatever. But thank you. So, um, yeah, knitting. What you got? I am knitting on two things. Two? Sure. Let me double check the show notes. <laughs> I believe I'm knitting on two things. Yes. I'm knitting on, look at my cute tangerine designs bag. You can buy one today in her update. It's so cute. She is super sweet. It's got boxes. Casey started quilting. Did she? She's doing a That's... jelly roll race quilt. If you were on Instagram, you would know this already. I am on Instagram. I mean, you don't follow her, I guess. I'm not friends with anyone. I was going to say, I don't have you on my friends list. How is it possible? I'm by myself. I think I've posted like two pictures ever. I'm on Twitter then more. Um, anyway, and I follow her on Twitter. So this is the first sock. See, it's done. That hand spun yeah. looks familiar. Yep, it's hand spun. It's Crown Mountain Farms. I can't remember the colorway. And I started the second one. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Barely. Um, I was working on these at knit night the other night, and that's Wednesday nights. And then I started not feeling well, and so they didn't get a whole lot of love um because I left early but yeah that's how far on a two I have and I'm doing these on size one needles um and this is hand spun I think I already said that so first one done second one started it's fun knitting socks with hand spun I'm enjoying it and this is what the ball of yarn looks like oh you have plenty gosh yep I should have plenty, and then if I have some left over, I might do a pair of socks for Julia or Alice, because um, we have this cool book from Cooperative Press on kid socks. Hand that... fun socks for kids. Wow, that's love right there. Mm-hmm. Um, I love my nieces. Alice I know got that you do. Ears yesterday. She's she got super... her ears pierced. Mm-hmm. Wow. But she's a big girl now. They went to Jersey to do it. They were in your neck of the woods. <laughs> but anyway, and then I started on my size seven signatures out of some unknown yarn, but it was sitting in my stash wound. So when I first got my ball winder and Swift, I wound all the things. And now this was back in like what, 2005 or six? Uh huh. A long Maybe time ago. seven. And so I wound all the things, and now I can't remember what this is. But it's a nice yarn, and it's been wound in a cake since whatever that was. <laughs> Ten years <laughs> ago, almost. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's time to use it up. So um, I'm doing the TGV Charlotte by Susan Ashcroft, which is a very simple pattern um, to do, to execute. And so basically you're just knitting, you're increasing three stitches a row, and there's a ruffle at the end. It's garter. I don't think that's giving away too much information. It's a paid for pattern. And it's really, really well written. She does a great job. So that's cool. what I have on the needles. It's very spring like. It's not for me, it's for a friend. But I think cool. she'll like it. Um, I only have one thing on the needles I can talk about. I'm um testing something that I'll show you guys in a couple weeks that I can't show it yet. Um and I am knitting the Mabel socks, which were inspired by Darren. Um, and they... Circles. Of knitting circles, yes, Amy and Darren. Um, and these are actually uh, written or designed by Sadie of the Ornivore podcast. So it's like the podcast trifecta socks. That's what I think that's what I'll call it on my page. 
because she designed them. He inspired me to knit them. And because he just finished a pair, correct? He did. Mm -hmm. that and is he was talking about how nice and art. stretchy they are. So this is the this is the first one, and this is the cuff, and it's a, already a longer cuff than I usually wear, but. Um, I wanted a longer one because I've just been wearing my hands knit socks with my trousers a lot at work, and um, I, I have discovered that with my dance goes, my trousers sit higher than they do with my flats, so I need more length. And this is out of Numma Numma Dopio in the sea turtle colorway, and oh, um, thank you. And it is very stretchy, like it's very stretchy. And I love the stitch. I think it's very clever. My dog has found me. Um, so I'll probably knit another maybe inch and a half, maybe two inches before okay. I start to heel flat. It's really turning out pretty. So my headset's died, and I didn't hear anything that you said oh, <laughs> for the last sorry. few minutes. So I switched over to different headsets. Those are super so, sexy. So if I was making, like, crazy faces, like, <laughs> I noticed you, but I just kept on going. So it should, and I'm this sure should. what you said was enthralling. And when I watch the episode, I'll totally see what you said. You're never gonna watch the episode. I'll you totally watch it just because I missed that part, and I want to hear what you said. I, I will anyway, watch the episode. I really like these a lot. Um, I think Sadie did a great job with designing them. So I'm, I'm enjoying them. I'm enjoying the yarn. This is the yarn. It's ball. nice and squishy. Yeah. It's got a nice um, tight twist, but that cashmere content with the squish factor is really, really nice. Yeah. And I, after I'd already kn I've knit a pair of sock cashmere in them, uh -huh. and I probably won't do a whole lot more just because cashmere is such a short staple with my dog's <laughs> butt. Um, and it tends to fuzz out. But... Did you know that you were a mountain that could be climbed? <laughs> I'm just hoping he doesn't take off with any of my knitting stuff. He really doesn't usually mess with it, but um, and it's living in my tangerine design. Your um, pig's bag. Jolly pig bag, and I and, and I love the lining fabric. It's so happy. It Casey is. Casey does a great job. So, um, and I'm going to give away a matching bag. I have a probably, matching bag to give away too. At some probably, point, maybe next year. week we'll do that. Okay. Um, so you can match the Knit Girls with your bag if you win it. So There you um, go. Or at least one of the Knit Girls. Yeah, well, the important one. <laughs> You're and, an star. Get your game on. Go play. Uh, that's all the knitting that I have on the needles that I can show you guys right now. So, And you've seen my dog's butt, so really your life is complete. <laughs> what else do you need? <laughs> go get your bone. Go get your bone. Um, I finished something. Okay. They are, um, so I've been eyeing these mittens for a while, these mitts. Um, they're not mittens, but um, they're the Camp Out Mitts by Tanta M. And um, there's the first one. I made them, I think, a little bit longer than what the pattern calls for. And here's the second one. They are knit on size sevens, and I knit them Magic Loop style using some signatures. And um, you, they're a free pattern, which is very cool. And they use a provisional cast on for the tops, and you go sideways, and then you work your way down. Mm -hmm. um, this is, and it used like probably around 100 yards of a 200 yard ball of fiber um, that I spun, so it's hand spun, out of um, Huckleberry Knits dyed it. It was part of her club in the Falkland, and I actually spun this in the Christmas episode when I was visiting with Leslie. Oh, 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 crap. My dog's stuck on my network cord. <laughs> oh, sorry. oh no, Neelix. <laughs> okay. That's All fail. is well. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt so, you. They don't have, um, like, you cast on stitches. They're worked from the top down. So you cast on stitches for the thumb. So if you wanted to add a thumb, though, they would be very easy to add. And they're actually um, a bit tight for me. So, which is good to know because they were going in long-range gift planning anyways. So this is going in the Christmas box or gift box for next year. It'll be very cool color-wise for a Christmas gift. It's very so. Or they dramatic. might go to mom for her birthday because she loves these colors. Yeah. But it's it's fun how, like, the tops came out very similar in color. Yeah. 
no effort. I like that. And uh, the pattern actually calls for Nora, which is more of a gradient yarn. So it would be fun to use with gradients as well. And very easy. So that is all the finished objects I have. Um, I have one. But it's a big really? one. I think it's a small one. Is it a small one or a big yeah, one? I just did it real quick. It didn't take any yeah. time at all. No time at all. So I'm wearing it. This is my calligraphy cardigan, which... Oh my aesthetic. And it is knit out of Madeline Tosh Pajmina worsted in the thunderstorm colorway. It calls for uh DK, but I got gauge on worsted, so that's what I did. Neelix, please go away. Where's Daddy? Go find Daddy. Never mind. Um <laughs> Anyway, I finished uh, the sleeves. The button bands were what I had to do this week, and they took kind of forever, but they did get done. I think you were working on the sleeves last week. You, like, you didn't have one done yet. Yeah, I think that was it, that I had. I was almost done with the second sleeve, and I needed to do the button band. Yeah. Um, That's I quite a bit of work. I not buttons on it yet. I did go to Joanne's today, but I didn't really see anything I liked, so I'm going to order some from either Melissa Jean or from um, Lori of Deerfield. I'm not certain yet which, whether wood or porcelain would look better. So I'm going to go look and see. Um, but I've been wearing it all day. It is very comfortable. I will try to get some actual pictures posted so you guys can see more than just chest up. Um, it is a little bit big in the sleeves. Uh, it, it hasn't been blocked yet. So I finished it earlier today, and I wanted to be able to actually show you guys it without it being wet, so I hadn't blocked it yet. And the sleeves are a little bit short, but it does grow lengthwise when you block it, so it'll be fine once it's been blocked. It's only about maybe an inch shorter than where I'd like it, so I'm fully expected to grow. And then it'll take care of maybe some of the big, like the width problems too. Yeah, where it'll lengthen out. it. Yeah. Um, but yes, overall, this was a really easy and simple pattern to follow. I think it would be great for a beginner for a first sweater, honestly, because it was very easy to top down raglan. You learn all about the construction, um, the numbers are all right, it's very nicely laid out, so I enjoyed the pattern um, a lot. It is a lot of stockinette, but, and it is a very expensive sweater, because I had like a rational moment where I thought, hmm, each sweater of Madeline Tosh Pajmina Worsted was $26. I used almost nine skeins. That's almost a $200 sweater. I better wear this for the rest of my natural life. I think you'll love it. So, um, but it is very soft and cushy. It does have a little bit of a halo, um, but no pilling so far. And I've I've been, you know, pretty rough on it already. So, cool. I enjoy it. I think it turned out well. I love it. I'm gonna have to cast on for that pattern sometime. Maybe like my fourth sweater that I have lined up will be that sweater. You Sorry. and Sue's, Aunt Sue's could knit it at the same time because Sue's bought the yarn for it and hasn't started it yet. Well, it's going to be a couple months, probably April before I get to it. But that's a great plan and she's super sweet. So yes. I'd love to knit along with her. Totally um, just made I obligation for Sue's. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I like how you <laughs> obligate other people. I have no spinning. See, I'm this used week. to it. She <laughs> hasn't been exposed to all that yet. <laughs> I'm corrupting other people. Sorry about that. Um, I have no spinning this week. Um, but since I, I finished this, I feel like now I can sort of spin, and I'd like to quilt a little bit this week. So I have no spinning. But Laura has some good spinning. I do. You're frozen on my screen, so hopefully that doesn't carry over. Yeah, I'm not on mine, so it should be okay. Okay. So I finished plying um, most, there you go, you just clicked back on for me, most of the um, Crown Mountain Farm Sock Hop. So oh, I have, that's actually a decent color. That's so tiny. It's so thin. Um, so this was the first one I showed y'all last week, and that was around 2.9 ounces. And that was like 320 yards. And then this one is... 4.5 ounces and it was like 420 yards maybe wow. so I'm at like 740 maybe I should write these things down and I forget so I'm definitely in the 700 of, of some kind and I've run out on one bobbin so I have a whole lot on one 
so three bobbins, it's three plied. One's still empty. One has a ton on it. I'm thinking around an ounce. And then the second one has that other missing little bit. Mm -hmm. And actually save some fiber back. Um, not long, like maybe that much that I can spin on that third empty bobbin and three yeah. ply at least another couple. Yeah. Probably 50 to 100 yards. And um, then I'll just Navajo ply what's left over. So I'll be happy to have those bobbins left because I started spinning this back in June. So. Yeah, you took a long break from it though, but I think oh, yeah. it's turning out wonderfully. I think it's. Delicious. I think it's gonna be lots of fun, and it's definitely um, and it's over flat on purpose because I wanted something with a nice tight twist, and I haven't soaked earth wax. I'll show it to y'all when I get done with that. But I think it's, it's beautiful. I think you did a great job. Pretty tiny. So it's pretty cool. I'm really happy with how it's coming out, and I have two more um, eight ounce bumps of the Crown Mountain Farms that I need to spin up. I think they're selling four ounce um, increments now. So you I like it, the eight you ounce bumps. You don't only do eight ounces, but I like that because then we can split it. Like yeah. Although I seem to be doing all the spinning, and you seem to be doing <laughs> the thing for you. Well, yeah. That's um, right. Other things that I spun, I made. Well, first off, I finished a bobbin of some Romney that I was supported um, supported long drawing. It's got that nice halo, and now I don't know where the end is. Okay, there it goes. So it's really, really fuzzy. So when you think about um, how woolen spun traps a lot of air, and it creates um, a very lofty but very, I don't want to use the term hairy, but very... Um, hairy. Yeah. It Not creates a bad way. It's that's a more softly spun looking because it is so airy so that's four ounces of romney on there um i started that at oxford you got and I four ounces people. on there mm -hmm. wow it's an eight ounce total wow thing the rest is in my car because i never took it out of my car after oxford <laughs> these are big bobbins the mini spinner bobbins are huge yeah. so um and then the other night, um, last week, I showed y'all some, the starry, do you happen to have your Into the World shipment right there, or did you put I it do. away? Oh, so I, I put something away. That's funny. <laughs> I took that, which is the Into the World English Shetland. Um, In the and the, yep. The CTA is doing go logs, and so I made a whole bunch of those out of that, and then divided them by color. So there's a dark, the dark blue, and then the lighter, and then behind me is a tray. That might be good. Like, oh, roll logs down. Uh, going to a light blue to yellow. So I'm going to gradient spin those. And Laura will link in the show notes to the video of David from Southern Cross <laughs> making these faux, faux, like fake faux logs. And so you can see I started with the blue and I got so into it that I didn't like move my, um, my guide for a long yeah. time. <laughs> and so it's like really big and kind of like, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's getting a little into the light blues now. So, and this is my mini spinner. I've had her, I don't think I've talked about her on the show. Um, I've had her, she's definitely a she, since mid-December. And we've been getting to know each other, so I didn't want to talk about her until I'd spun a couple pounds on her. But she's getting there. We're getting used to each other. She's lots of fun. So she's very portable, which I love. Because I can take her, I can like put her in my big, um, sugar skulls bag my attentee bag and just you know two minute pack up and take her to um the yarn shop or even work if i want to yeah she works out well for me and she went to philadelphia when i visited leslie mm -hmm. and worked well there so we're getting to know each other it's going well so that's what i'm spinning right now and that's about it on spinning. 
We're going to do a book review today. Yes. It is Botanical Knits by Alana Dacos of the Never Not Knitting podcast. Mm -hmm. She also has two other books that she's published, one for kids, and then one in conjunction with Hannah Fettig, the um, Coast Coastal, Coastal Knits. Knits. So this is Botanical Knits, and this is just by her. Mm -hmm. We purchased the ebook copy, and I'm very glad we did because A, my bookshelf is getting very, very full, <laughs> but B, this, and I'll show you in a second, this has a lot of very cool links to it embedded in the ebook. So this is the table of contents, and on the table of contents, you can actually click a link, and it goes right to it. Yeah. So I thought and that I was do like at the beginning, cool. like Laura was showing the table of contents, it has images of all the patterns that are in the book. So it's like a, you know, a visual index. And I really, really appreciate that because, and it references the page number. So again, you see this pattern, you really like it. You don't even have to look up the name. You just click it and it'll take you right if you click the right spot, which I have big fat fingers and that apparently doesn't work. Um, then it'll take you right you to that pattern. Name, it'll take you right to it. So. And on the actual pattern, and the first one is Autumn's End, which is the red sweat, reddish. The cover sweater. Sweater that's on the cover, mm -hmm. and it's done out of um, Barocco in the Ultra Pack of Light. When I click, there's a little green box by it. That will actually take me to Ravelry, to the pattern page. Mm -hmm. So, so that is a use very, that to go very and look cool at other people's projects that have knit it. Look for helpful notes. Look at you know gauge information. Look for any errata because it would be linked in the project page in the pattern page. It would be linked there. Yep. So um, like always, just looking at one layout page. Her layout is impeccable. It looks like, and I know this has been said before, but it looks like almost scrapbooking designs. Mm -hmm. She has a gorgeous layout, and you can always look forward to some drawings, the little leaf details, which are hand-knit, which go throughout the whole book. And um, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous layout for a book. Yeah, the whole theme Everything. of the book is based on leaves and how her love of leaves um, and nature in general. So all of the patterns have some reference to it, to, to leaves. Mm -hmm. And the schematics themselves are the actual sweaters, hmm. which I really, really like. It's not just a hand-drawn line. It's actually a measurement of where you are on that sweater. Yeah, that's that very helpful. Sweater, which I really, really like. So I like the pullover, the autumn's. Um, Autumn's End and then next is Twigs and Willows and Twigs and Willows is actually my favorite pattern in the entire book I would say it's out of Jared Flood's yarn um, which is the Brooklyn Tweed Shelter they, she also gives alternative yarn so if you don't want to use the Woolen Spun Shelter because it is Woolen Spun Cascade 220 is her alternative yarn alternate yarn and I just love, especially in that tweedy kind of Jared Flood shelter tweed, yeah. I just love that. And I think it would be gorgeous in any kind of tweedy worsted yarn that's got a little bit of structure like a Cascade 220 or a shelter. And this one is Buds and Blooms. This one I know Diane is totally in love with. Mm -hmm. It's got a very cool um, sort of shawl collar, but it's shaped differently. And it's got the little leaf detail on the pocket, which is very cool. There's Entangled Vines, which is a top-down raglan. And from the front, it's very, very pretty. But then that side detail mm -hmm. is what really makes the sweater, in my opinion. And that is knit using the Fiber Company Organic. So an organic merino baby alpaca silk blend with a little bit of drape to it, which would be very pretty and very warm and cozy. I also want to mention her sizes. I was just going to say that. I looked at the sizes for the one I just showed. It went all the way up to 62. This was... one goes up to a 58 and three quarters and down to a 31. So very impressive. 
lot of, um, and it tells you how much ease is built in. So is meant to be built in. So that's really nice as well. I think that my favorite pattern in this whole book, let me click on it here. If I can get my fat fingers to cooperate. <laughs> so there's the sweaters, which I think we showed you every one of the sweaters. And then it goes into accessories. This is my favorite. It's the Oak Trail hat. And I actually really need to look at the way that it's designed because it's got this detail that goes around the brim and up uh-huh and i just think that's incredibly clever that's a slightly better picture of it i really like that one i also really really like the ivy trellis mitts which are done out of miss babs and they are just gorgeous and they actually match a pair of socks that are in the book as well so those mittens are just and that color just reminds me of amy of um knitting and circles that burnt orange mm -hmm. and our friend jess is actually knitting i think a sweater out of a very yep. similar color right now that's roasted pumpkin and hers is something similar but miss babs's yarn is impeccable and there's a lot of variety in the yarn choices in this book it's not just all miss babs or malabrigo or, or I think Malibrigo Fox, yeah. is used at all um there's just a nice variety amongst everything i like the mitts as well spring foliage They've got a lot of cool um, leaf detail here up the thumb, and then otherwise they're very plain. And I like items like that that are, aren't over-designed. Yes, I agree. And then for this pressed leaves hat, has a lot of, like, the pop of those leaf details I really, really like. And that's in Mad Tosh Sport. So if you picked up, like, a skin of Mad Tosh Sport, when you were traveling or something, I'm sorry, it's Mantosh DK, Merino DK. And you have that one skein and a kind of solid color, that would be perfect for that. And then my last thing that I really, really like is a shawl that I actually, it's a larger size of one that I already own. So she took the cedar leaf shawlette and made it into a full blown shawl called Wrapped in Leaves. And I just really, that's why I bought the Charlotte pattern. I really, really like that. It uses classically magnolia or pashmina worsted. Um, I have tons of worsted weight and it's only like 475 yards. So I definitely have some of that. I think I have some enough vintage that I could definitely do that. Sure. Or if I wanted to make it lighter, I have two skeins of the tart in the just pashmina. Mm -hmm. which would be really, really pretty in that. I'm definitely considering that. So besides that, there's a gorgeous techniques um, page and abbreviations page that you can reference at the back. And I really like how she did her yarn resources page. I think it's a very clever um, layout, and I like that she incorporates her inspiration into the entire theme of the book with the leaves. Mm -hmm. I think it's done well, but it's not too in your face. So I believe the um, if you were to buy like the paperback version of this book, it's twenty two dollars. And, and it's I know not it, available yet. I don't think it's pre order, but yeah. if you purchase it, she'll give you the ebook for free as well. I think she's doing a deal with that right now. We spent eighteen dollars on the ebook on uh, Ravelry. I purchased it, so. It's a nice book, and that is The Botanical Knits by Alana Dacos. And I look forward to seeing and knitting some of her stuff in the future. Yeah. She has a lot of great patterns. I was impressed with the sizing because a lot of designers don't put forth the time to do the extended oh, yeah. sizing. So um, we are adding a new segment. Are you ready? Sporadically. It won't Sporadically. It's not every, every time. It's just when it comes up when we're thinking about it. And it's going to be called Technique Talk. And this week's is about provisional cast-ons. So how do you provisionally cast on most of the time? Um, I have tried, um, and there are several different methods, and I know Laura's going to talk about that. I have tried the crochet chain and then knit into the chain, and I'm horrible at that. Um, I actually prefer to do the crochet over the knitting needle method. Mm -hmm. 
That's the easiest way for me. It's very awkward, but it's not difficult for me. Like, you know, and everybody's skill levels and coordination and all that's different. But for me, that is the easiest way to get it done and get it done relatively quickly. So what about you? And those were the first two ways that I learned and I struggled. There was, I took a class with a designer and I was literally almost crying in the back of the room trying to get those two done and just could not. So I was looking for different ways to do a provisional cast on. And on these mitts, you start and you knit, you cast on some stitches and you knit them flat and you start with a provisional cast on. So what I did on these ones is I did Judy's magic cast on which is typically used for like the toes of socks mm -hmm. and used it as a provisional cast on. And that's a method that she goes into Judy Becker goes into in her book um, all about Judy's magic cast on, which I'll link in the show notes, but it's um, a very interesting and very easy way to go. So if you're going to do it stockinette, basically you just knit on the one needle back and forth. And if you want to do it garter, you start with the bumps facing you, the wrong side facing you, and start that way. So I really, really prefer that because I can just scooch the other stitches over onto a spare needle. But when I was in class last, um, maybe like three weeks ago when I took that Oxford class, mm -hmm. Susan, or Susan, not Susan. Shannon. Shannon Oki um, was talking about when she does necklines of sweaters, sometimes she'll provisionally cast on on the neckline of a sweater so she could always make it tighter or looser and go down from there. Mm -hmm. um, and she uses a long tail cast on. And instead of using the same yarn for both the tail and the working yarn, you use working yarn for both, she uses a separate one for each and then can just undo that edge if she needs to. So she One uses piece. a waist yarn. So if I was going to provisionally cast on, let me grab two yarns. I actually have them here. So she would, that spare. let's pretend this is a knitting needle. <laughs> so instead of, um, she makes a slip knot like here. And puts it on her needle. I'm using a pipe cleaner for a needle because I'm high class like that. And um, would use the blue for like the tail end and her working yarn for that. And so when she casts on, see how the blue's all at the bottom? Oh yes, okay. I've seen I've seen that, but it was described as something else. And so it's a long tail cast on basically, and then she can undo that blue there and pick up those last stitches. So it's not as easy to rip out as a crochet mm -mm. cast on, but it is a much easier way to initially do it because most people know how to do a long tail cast on. Yes, I that would say sense. so. Hmm. So that was, I found that very, very interesting because I had not thought of that before. I have done that method of long tail cast on before if I was casting on a large number of outside and the inside of the same ball of yarn let's say I was casting on like 800 stitches and I didn't want a tail that was flopping around that was 800 and I'd run out of like stitch number 789 yeah um so you can use two different balls of yarn or go from the inside or the outside of a ball of yarn and go um and use that instead, and you'll never run out that way on your tail. So if you have a no. problem calculating with a tail, that what might about be a Latvian braid? Doesn't it, it use a cast on similar to that, to what you just know. showed? Which I think so. Yes, I think it, so it because that's what I think. That's when I've done it before. Is when I did a Latvian braid for your mystery knit uh -huh. um, last year. So. so. Um, yep. So those are four methods of provisional cast-ons. And we talked about some different places where we've used provisional cast-ons. Um, the tops of sweaters, those mitts. Have you used them on a hat before for, like, the brim? I don't believe so. Um, I'm trying to think of the last time that I used a provisional cast-on for... Um, 
gosh, I can't even remember, honestly. You used oh, it on your maple. Did you do maple wing? The Anne Hansen shawl? Because yes. I think it uses it on that. Yes, because then you rip it out and you go back and seam it. Um, for the even star, for the edging, you use a provisional cast on for that, which is super fun and cobweb weight yarn. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I think I've used it on a, a few shawls, and I know I've used it on a pair of socks once. And um, a few other and I've actually things. shied away from patterns that use provisional cast ons, but I think with like all these different bags in your tricks in your bag, that they're less intimidating, especially yeah. the long tail one. We're using Judy's magic cast on. Crochet hooks scare me. <laughs> I think it's more of a coordination issue with you than it is a skill issue. <laughs> but. So anyway, we'll be interested in seeing what y'all have to think about um, provisional cast-ons and where you've used them in the past mm -hmm. and plan on using them in the future. So I know that you love that Judy's Magic Cast-On book. Like, I, you've talked about that book probably two dozen times since you... That's a great resource. ...since you got it, so um, I might have to break down and buy it myself. It's a good one. Um, I, I like books that I can use, not necessarily for patterns, but for resources. We were talking yeah, about some friends. Um, I, don't get me wrong. I have a metric ton of pattern books that I love and would never give up. Um, but sometimes it's really nice to have, be able to pull out something like The Principles of Knitting or Knitter's Book of Wool or Mason Dixon and really look at the technique itself. And that's why I wanted to add that segment a little bit too. Because, uh, I mean, we talk about techniques a lot in passing. I think it's yeah. fun to focus on one every once in a while. And well, and you and I are very different knitters. Um, <laughs> I don't say that negatively. I just mean yeah. that we are very different knitters. Um, we Very rarely are we knitting the same thing, or do we knit the same thing. Yeah. Um, and that's just because we have different goals, and you – you know, honestly, I think you are much more of a process knitter than me. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And I am much more focused on the goal. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, you know, I'm looking for the pair of socks, not the wonderful 15 hours that I'll put in enjoying podcasts or whatever while I'm doing it. I'm much more of a product knitter than a process knitter. But and that may lead us to use different techniques. So I think it's relevant. I think it's fun. And I'm also one of those people like with this, I was like, how can I make this pattern suit my needs better? How can I deconstruct this pattern and add on different things that I would like? So I added the ribbing on the bottom. I don't think I even said that because it just stops. So I got to have something down there. Yeah, I would have added ribbing too, I think. And I like, um, like on these, if these were for me, they're kind of low for my fingers. So I would definitely mm -hmm. add more rows in here and add a little bit more to the thumb gusset. So pick up more stitches. But I mean, that's, that's the cool thing about knitting is it's not one size fits all. It's yeah. you can alter it to make it work however you want to once you have those skills. We've totally gone off on this tangent of why knitting is wonderful. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. So some very important things, some favorite things that we have to talk about mm -hmm. is um, Jay Pled, who's the host of Knitting Brooklyn, is teaming up with the folks from Remembering Remy again, and they are doing a charity preemie cap knit along with some wonderful prizes and some wonderful things. So if you have not checked out Knitting Brooklyn, A, she's a wonderful audio podcast, and you should be listening to her because she's fantastic. Um, and Jessica's just wonderful. And then B, she does every year, she's been doing this Remembering Remy um, knit along with the folks behind that, whose name I totally forget now. Who does Remembering it, Remy? Oh. Anyway, um, who's a sweetheart as well, and I can't remember believe I forgot her name. She's I know that they're um T B McCarthy. McCarthy. Yeah, T B McCarthy, there you go. So they're wonderful folks and I definitely I'm gonna knit some preemie caps for them and they're just fun. So check that out. Yeah. Um we also have a good friend 
uh, Mel of Single Handed Knits who is hosting a mystery knit along for a sweater, which is a really cool thing. And it starts on Thursday? Tuesday. Tuesday. The 12th. Oh, is it the 12th? I thought it was the 14th for some reason. Um, you have Valentine's Day on the brain. Well, my son has a President's Day parade thing I have to go to on Valentine's Day. Maybe that's why. But anyhow, um, Mel, uh, Melissa, is hosting this sweater knit along. And I think you can buy the pattern. If you buy it now, it's like 350 If you wait until after the mystery thing, it's going to be more, $5 or 550 or something like that. Um, and she's given out gauge information and all that. So that's what you should be doing now if you are participating, is you should be swatching. And Swatching's I did. Fun. I swatched. Uh, and I actually swatched in Madeline Tosh worsted and tart and I could not get gauge and then I tried um, the Elan Highland Silk and I could not get gauge and so I did some math and sat down and figured some stuff out and then I swatched in this Madeline Tosh Sport I love that color away with you and this is William Morris um, and I didn't know who William Morse was, so I went to Wikipedia, and he was a textile artist, among many oh. other things. He was a really varied um, guy. And I'm not certain how this particular color references him, just because I only spent like five minutes looking. But I really do enjoy it. I bought this when I was with Mel at the Loopy U, so I thought it was fitting. And I just adore her face. So um, I got Gage spot on. Um, before I swatched it, I was about a stitch off, or before I soaked it, I was about a stitch off, and then once I soaked it, it grew enough to to be perfect. So um, this is going to be what I am going to knit it out of, and I really like the way that it feels. And this is going to be the second sweater I've knit in metal and Tosh this year, so I'm That's a little bit cool. on a Tosh kick. What did you swatch in? I swatched in, because um, no one local to me has Tosh. Um, that I'm aware of. So I had from my local yarn shop some Cascade 220 Quattro mm -hmm. in the Superwash. That's like so, the one that's got the different color in it, Yeah, right? it's got the little, like, it's kind of tweeting it up. Yeah. Um, so I swatched in this on size 8, didn't get gauge. This is size 7, still didn't get gauge. But on size 6s, I have gauge. So I'm knitting on size 6s, and, and it will be awesome. A worsted weight, right? Yep. And I'm knitting a sport weight on sevens to get gauge. That tells you how different we are <laughs> with gauge because I could yeah. not get gauge in a worsted yarn. And, and I like the drape of this, so I think it'll be fine. Um, I think it'll be awesome. I just, I just find it so funny how different, you know, I'm a very tight knitter. You're loose, but not too loose. And then Jessica, um, show me your knits, the moderator on our group, is like super loose. She can knit a sock on size zeros, and I can knit a sock on size twos, and mine would be tighter than hers. Yep. Just because of gauge, you know? It's just so crazy. And it's so critical. That's why it's so important to swatch. Especially for a sweater. A lot of things, you can be very indifferent about it on, yes. you know, shawl, scarf, sometimes even hats, because if you've got a loose hat, who cares? It's just a hat, right? Yep. But you do not want to knit an entire sweater and have it not fit. Ask me. <laughs> I've done it three times. So, oh, so that's Anyhow. Mel's knit along coming up, so that'll yep. be fun. And then um, I am going to do, Diane of Knittables is doing a spin along. Mm -hmm. And so she is asking that you get two very different um fibers and spin them as singles and then spin them together so i have two of I these no i must have was that in her last podcast um no it started this past month like february there's a oh, whole thread God. on how here. did i glaze over that that's a cool idea yeah it's very cool so this is gonna be one and these are bats that i got from brenda of wooden spinner dot com yeah. she's on etsy and so these are actually naturally dyed using uh, logwood. So they're going to bleed a little bit in the colorways purple haze. And then my friend Rose sent me a package this week for Christmas. Aww. I know. And inside this is so perfect. Our two bats. 
So those are BFL and silk. And then these are merino silk. Ooh, pretty. So I'm going to combine those two. That'll be gorgeous. So I'm really, it's purple. What could go wrong? Is the goal of her spin along to, for them to be very different color wise? Yes. Okay. Color wise, um, very different. And she did an example that's very cool. And there's a lot, if you're interested in color theory, there's a lot of really cool things going on over there. Dana. Now, she, hers did was really the Sose Katano, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So I have seen it. I just missed the spin along part. Anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yep. No, Dana of Unwind, and um, she's got a podcast. As well, just one more row with Brittany. Mm -hmm. She did some really pretty ones. Well, she did one, and she's gonna do another one, so that'll be very cool. And now well, I, I might do that, but I might face. do it with like, I might spin it thick and bulky, and then do a another yeah. crazy bulky and spin it. That might be fine. That'd be super fun. Um, both mine are bats, so they're woolen preps. So I'm probably gonna long draw them because that's what I seem to be into right now. It's um, instant gratification, happy well, satisfaction. Well, it's very thick and thin and fun for me right now, and I'm trying to expand my spinning abilities a little bit and work on some different things. So I think that'd be really fun. Yeah. My voice is super cool right now. It's very um, 900 Robot. number. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the first thing I was going to say, but I was like, crap, we have kids that watch the show. <laughs> All right, so um, we have two giveaways, and we're going to announce a new giveaway as well. Um, so the first giveaway is for the fiber optic. I'm sorry, I was looking for my tablet. For the fiber optic, um, the $29 gift certificate to her shop. question this week was to link us to a pattern that you thought would look nice in a gradient. And I actually added like five things to my queue. Looking I think I might do a page at the top of the group that lists some of the gradient patterns that were listed. That'd be cool. Yeah. You I could just, just link to, to the thread. Good. Yeah, I could. That's a good idea. So there were 148 entries in there. And I'm going to go to random.org and type in from to 149 because there were 149 posts but Laura was the first yep so, I'm not allowed to win for some mean reason 2 to 149 <laughs> I'm going to hit generate and the winner is number 121 will you look who that is up I will be page 5 yep I'm already on page 5 sweet mainly because I was on page 6 and it wasn't on the top of page 6 so you said 121 121. It is truly W Knits. Oh, she's got a cute, like, Ravatar. It's different pictures of her and someone else. And she's from Ohio. And she says she's planning on using the gradient com combined with black to make Oh, yeah. That is very cool. Yeah, that's a Stephen West pattern. I like that one. And those, those two colors playing off of each other will be very, very cool. Awesome. So get in contact with me. And I will put you in contact with Kimber, and um, we'll make sure that you get your certificate. And the next is for the American lamb that Laura yep. is going to show you. So this is two skeins of this squishiness. And it was there were 152 total posts. The first one was Laura. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do between numbers 2 and 152 and hit generate. And the winner is number 92. Should be on page 4, correct? Yes. Awesome. Hold well, on, I'm slowly getting up there. You said 92? 92 is correct. I like to reconfirm <laughs> before I say stuff, because that would be horrible. <gasps> Guess who won? I don't know. Dingle Daisy. Oh, Ellery. <laughs> <laughs> she was just complaining to me that... um. She hasn't won anything in like six months, and that's so, so full unfair. disclosure. Eloise uh, Dingle Daisy is our friend Eloise, who always manages to win something. Always, she has very good karma. She must have done a lot of wonderful things in her life. And she's she actually in Pennsylvania wins. right now, visiting family. <laughs> she had a death in the family, so she's up there. So she said maybe some mittens that I could use right now on my visit to cold Pennsylvania. <laughs> That's very so when cool. She comes home. That's awesome. That'll save me on shipping. <laughs> <laughs> no post office for me this week. 
Oh, that is, that's cool. Congratulations to both of our winners. I'm going to make her tell me that she won before she's allowed to have a ride. <laughs> I'm not going to share that information with her at all. She watches us every week. She'll, I know. She'll, she'll know. let you know. So um, I think that's about it. Is Oh, the giveaway for this coming week. Yay. I'm so excited. So I promised oh, this last week. I love that bag. It's so cute. It's so, like, 80. I would awesome. rock the crap out of that bag. I love it. <laughs> anyway, this is from the wonderful Jen Rose of Absolute Wonder Bags. She's got some gorgeous bags. So if you don't want this one, you should go over to Etsy. There's her website right there. And check her out. And she does some bigger bags, and then she does this size, and she does some box bags and some Notions pouches as well. And this actually has pockets on the inside as well. So That's cool. There's those I cool, love that like, fabric. two it's side so pockets. So adorable. And then a main flat bottom pocket. Oh, no. So very cool. I think I'm going to have to order one of her bags in the future. So absolute wonder bags. And you can win this bag by... Hmm. Let's see. What should we do? Telling us what you put in it. <laughs> Which of your current works in progress, links appreciated, that you would put in or a pictures. bag? pictures. Yes. There you go. The, the so more the... happy and excited my voice gets, the more agitated that one gets. <laughs> so very, very nice. And it locks. And it's yeah. very cool. And I like the interior fabric as well. It's all polka dotty, especially the red. There's those two pockets. That's very cool about those pockets. Yeah, I like did a that. Good job. So much. Um, if you're allergic to cats, Humberto has been up on the desk lately, so I will make sure that I roll it pretty good before I send it to you. But he's been around. If you're allergic to cats or dogs, you probably will never be in my house. <laughs> no, sorry. But um. And we will start a thread. Must be a member of the group. We'll close it before we record next Sunday. Yes, and we have another fiber optic um, gradient to give away. Laura and I will chat on the how to enter, and we'll put it in the thread because we haven't decided yet. So, <laughs> and you don't want to sit here and watch us go. Um, maybe we should. Uh, so we'll put it in the thread. Yep. So if you're not a member of our Ravelry group, check it out. We've got some cool stuff going on over there. We do. We have some great members and some very supportive folks, so we appreciate it. And thank you all so much for watching. We know you have choices, lots and lots of choices when it comes to video podcasts. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you all every single week. Yes. And um, we hope you have a good Valentine's Day if you celebrate it. And if you don't, I hope you have a nice Thursday. <laughs> and um, we'll I'll be see. having a nice Thursday. <laughs> so will I, honey. So will I. <laughs> but um, we will see you guys again next week. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.